Hello, operational leaders. This video is a Tools for the Trenches variety pack, which includes video segments from a few different training sessions, quick changeover, walking the production floor, recruiting, and stress management. In total, we have over 100 topics that we deliver over a two-year period of time with the goal of making your supervisors into manufacturing experts. If you want to see a longer demo, please check out our engagement video that comes along with an article and session notes and those are standard for all supervisor sessions. I hope you really enjoy this video montage. In this step, you'll want to reduce the time that it takes to do each internal changeover action. Quick disconnects, pin locations, and stops are easy poke oak items. What's poke oak, you ask? Well, poke oak is simply a lean term for making something mistake proof. And I'll discuss that in more detail in another T for T session. But the key point here is that the more you can use pins and stops instead of infinite adjustments on your machines, the faster the changeover will go and the more robust the ramp will be and the better the product variability will be. And that'll improve quality. Note that by using quick disconnect fasteners, thumb screws, and modifying equipment in support of changeover reduction. It should reduce or eliminate the need for tools like wrenches and screwdrivers during the changeover. So have your team track the number of tools needed to complete the changeovers. This is a good metric as it directly correlates with changeover times. Next, label machine run settings directly on the machine. This will help your operators and your ramp as they'll be able to adjust the machine quickly to the right settings. Lastly, make your changeovers as simple as possible, and that way you can easily train some of your lower skilled employees to support the changeovers too. I wanna to mention that ramp is a critical aspect of changeovers, and this can't be ignored, but you'll find a positive, positive correlation between your changeover times and your ramp times. The faster your changeovers go, the quicker the ramp will be as well. And that's because you're reducing the number and degree of input variables that are affecting your changeover and your ramp. The next project I'm going to be discussing is in a Swiss CNC machine shop, and we were doing about 50 to 60 setups per month, and the SMED team was able to double that to 110 to 120 setups per month. So these CNC machines, there's not a lot you can do mechanically to improve the setup times on them. Everything we did was more related to the systemic processes that supported these machines, and I'll get into some detail about that. And one of the things um, we did here was track not the setup times, but we tracked the number of setups per month, and that was because we were in very short production runs. We could run 200, 200 piece orders in a matter of an hour or two hours, and so they were constantly in changeover. It was more about getting the machinist to be able to do the changeovers quick, quicker, not the amount of downtime that the machine had for the changeover. Um, the machinists were kind of playing whack-a-mole um, with the setups, running from one setup to another. So we wanted to double the, the number of setups that we get we could get done in a month. So that was the uh, metric that was important to this machine shop. Our first step of this project was to get organized with our tooling. Our tooling was a mess. It was everywhere. And the machinists would go to set up a machine and wouldn't be able to find a tool. They didn't know if, we, if the tool was in another machine, if it was ever ordered, if it was broken, if it was lost. Um, so it was a mess and it caused a lot of downtime just being disorganized with the tooling. So we bought some Vidmar cabinets and got everything organized, got it labeled, um, got part numbers into, into a system. So we knew what we had on hand at all times and machinists could look at that before the machine actually shut down to know if they had the tooling that they needed for the setup. Let's take a look at these walks individually, starting with the early shift walk. The intent of this first walk of the day is to prime the pump. In other words, to put yourself and your team in a position to have a great shift. The first thing I like to do when I hit the floor is to say hello to everybody. I feel like it sets the tone for the rest of the shift. And in all my years of experience, I've only had one employee that wouldn't reciprocate. I would walk around and I would say hello, and this person didn't say hello back. And eventually I did stop saying um, hello to them. And when I did, they got the point, and then they would say hello to me, and then I reciprocated, and that was that. But setting, setting uh, the shift up, I think being friendly to everybody when you first come in really sets the tone, and you're the pace setter. So it allows you to kind of 
inject some energy right away by saying good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your shift to everybody right away. Um, note absences. I feel like the call out numbers are maybe 75 or 80% accurate, which means that you don't always get a full understanding of who's there and who's not there until you walk the production floor. So I, I would always walk around and make note of that. Um, sometimes you have no call, no show. Somebody, sometimes you have somebody stuck in traffic. Sometimes you have uh, a really good employee maybe that has an emergency situation they need to resolve before they call you. So I like to see with my own eyes who's there and who's not there, which leads me to my next point is adjusting staffing. So you want to adjust obviously for call outs, maybe you have somebody in training, Maybe you have a hot order that needs to get out the door, so you need to adjust staffing in order to um, achieve your objectives for the day. So adjust the staffing, and then um, next, look at the metrics uh, that you can. You know, look at the previous 24 hours. I've had you know operator handwritten binders that I reviewed. Um, sometimes I've had access to digital information that'll show me scrap and efficiency and productivity and those kind of things. But any data that you have available that you can review the previous 24 hours gives you information for your shift and you can use that information to make decisions uh, right away first thing in the morning. Thanks for inviting me to join the conversation, Joe. Honestly, recruiting is a topic that causes a lot of unneeded stress for hiring managers. So I'm glad I can share my own experiences and tips and maybe we can simplify and streamline the process. So let's say this manufacturing company has three open positions, a case packer, which is an entry level position, an operator, which is a mid-level production position, and a mechanic, a production mechanic, let's say that's a, a skilled trade position. How would a company go about collecting these, these resumes and applications in order to get started in the recruiting process and finding the best qualified candidates to fill these roles? Before we get into the specifics of hiring for all those specific positions, let's take a wider lens to this question, because our goal is not only to fill these positions today, but to build a robust pipeline of candidates to meet for future hiring demands in the process. So that's why the candidate experience is something that we're really going to emphasize. It's really worth talking about how technology trends have changed recruiting. So the ATS or the applicant tracking system has certainly been a game changer in building a pipeline of candidates for manufacturers. This system allows you to post on multiple hiring sites and gives your candidates the ease of mobile friendly application process. Because honestly, that's where your, app, your applicants are using their phones. So candidates, remember how they used to submit a resume then afterwards have to type in all the information on the application form? Instead, after submitting the resume, even through their phone, the ATS will populate this for the candidates. So that allows you to be able to scan and search for skills and experience that you're looking for. And then that's going to bring the top candidates that have the keywords that match. So looking at our scenario to hire for these three different positions to get the right candidates through the door with those skills and experience, it honestly starts with something, the important part to start with is how do you write your job description? So whether you use your ATS or not, do you have a clear, consistent brand and message? Hello, manufacturing supervisors, and welcome to Tools for the Trenches. This week, I'm gonna be discussing stress management. Stress management is one of the most important aspects for a supervisor's success, and it's one of the most important topics that I'm going to be covering in Tools for the Trenches. Manufacturing supervision is a very stressful job. There are high levels of, of accountability because everything is just so measurable. Expectations are very high, and if everything runs perfectly, then you meet expectations. But if just one thing falls short, then you missed expectations. It's a pretty tough gig. Some types, some types of supervisor stress is good for you, but you just don't want to be overwhelmed by your job stress. So during this session, I'm going to share with you what I learned about managing stress through my career journey in various manufacturing leadership assignments. I remember my first role as a night shift supervisor. I was working 10 to 12 hour days, six and seven days a week. And when I was, when I was away from work, I was still thinking about work. And even when I was sleeping, I was dreaming about work. So needless to say, I was very stressed in my role as a supervisor. 
And I didn't really have the tools or experience to deal with the stressful situations at work. But over time, I learned and I grew and I found ways to respond better and lower my stress levels. So I'm going to share with you what I learned about stress management and manufacturing leadership assignments. So I really hope that I can help you to better manage your workplace stress so that you can really enjoy your time at work and away from work and have fun and a more enjoyable experience in general.